Katherine Beecher was an author and educator who was responsible for creating a new social attitude that placed greater value on women's work in the home and their role as educators and moral guides for the young. She lobbied for the creation of schools for women, arguing that for their special role as instructors of children, women required a thorough education. Catherine was born on September 6, 1800 to Lyman and Roxana Beecher. At the time, the family lived in East Hampton on Long Island in New York. Catherine was the oldest of 11 children, eight from her mother Roxana and three from her stepmother Harriet Porter. She had seven brothers and three sisters, one of whom is the well-known Harriet Elizabeth Beecher. She was born into a family of deep religious convictions and social conscience that spanned the 19th century and made them prominent historical figures whose impact on reform movements in public life were exceptional. Dr. Leonard Bacon, circa 1863, is quoted as saying, the country is inhabited by saints, sinners, and Beechers. Her father, Lyman Beecher, was the son of Calvinist colonist. He was Yale educated and ordained a minister at the age of 24. Lyman began his career in East Hampton preaching his Calvinist roots. In 1826, being known as one of the best known preachers in the country, he became the minister at the Hanover Church in Boston, an American religious center. In 1809, when Catherine was nine, the Beecher family moved to Litchfield, Connecticut. At the age of 10, Catherine began her formal schooling at Sarah Pierce's Litchfield Female Academy. Miss Pierce broke new ground with her educational beliefs, maintaining that men and women were intellectually equal, a lesson that young Catherine took deeply to heart. Catherine's education went beyond just learning proper social skills. She also learned the importance of growing a moral conscience and leadership abilities. Catherine began her writing career while still in her teens with local literary circles circulating her poems and ballads. Though successful at the academy, Catherine had to resign her studies with the passing of her mother in 1816. After her mother's death, Catherine, now 16, became the head of the household. She took on the domestic duties that her mother had passed along to her. At the time, Catherine did not care for her new role, but soon came to view domestic responsibilities as a valuable and sacred contribution to home and community. While not in formal schooling, she continued to self-educate herself. At 22, Catherine was engaged to Alexander Fisher, a natural history professor at Yale who had read one of her poems and sought out its author. Though this made her father happy, Catherine was not overly excited about her upcoming nuptials to Fisher, saying, his unaffectionate nature would not make him an ideal husband. Regardless, the marriage never happened as Fisher was shipwrecked and killed. Catherine began her teaching career in 1821. In 1823, she opened the Hartford Female Seminary in Connecticut. Upon opening its doors, Catherine had created one of the first major educational institutions for women in the U.S. The seminary taught what was considered a radical curriculum, including physical education type courses for girls. Catherine opened the school with her sister Mary. Its main focus was to teach young women how to be mothers and teachers. At the time, Catherine's brother Edward was the headmaster of the Hartford Latin School. She was known to enlist in courses with him only just before turning around and teaching the content to her students, who excelled in many things girls were not expected to for the times. Catherine wanted more for the young women who attended her school. Going against current girly curriculums of fine arts and languages, Catherine's school brought a much more diverse set of studies offering things such as algebra and chemistry. In her suggestions on education, she questioned the current state of women's education by asking what but superficial knowledge could be a result of such system. Catherine operated her school for eight years. After opening it in 1823, in 1831, Catherine left it to an entrusted colleague and decided to join her father in Cincinnati, Ohio. Compared to Connecticut's established and well-educated society, Ohio was still quite the unsettled frontier with as much as one-third of its children not having access to schools. Recognizing the need for more women to become teachers, Catherine opened the Western Female Institute. The institute provided more women with the opportunity to become educated, trained teachers. It was Catherine's intention for her institute to serve as a model for future teacher colleges across the country. Due to the Panic of 1837 and nationwide depression, the institute was forced to close its doors. Throughout the 1840s, Catherine spent her time recruiting teachers for schools across the still-developing western frontier. Catherine founded the Central Committee for Promoting National Education, whose goal was to promote teacher education and strive to establish education as a profession. In 1852, Catherine was one of the founders of the American Women's Education Association, which set up institutions of higher learning for women. Catherine was also a prolific writer. She wrote everything from cook's books to textbooks, from advice books to newspaper articles and essays. After the closing of her second school, Catherine began working with the famous McGuffey readers, 
which would become the first nationally adopted textbooks for elementary students. Catherine published her most influential work in 1841, A Treatise on Domestic Economy, from which grew home economics. The treatise was a practical and moral guide of domestic life, providing women with a handy, single source of household knowledge that had not existed before. She wanted women to see domestic work not as mundane drudgery, but as the greatest work that provided the foundation for a healthy society. A mass of contradictions, Catherine championed the intellectual capabilities of women, but remained an anti-suffragist throughout her life, believing that women could best influence society by their work in the home and the schoolhouse. She thought suffrage would cause the humble labors of the family and school to be still more undervalued and shunned. Beecher herself never married, which creates a paradox between her personal life and views about women's proper role in society. Despite her belief that women should remain in the domestic sphere, Beecher lived a very active life outside of the home that was filled with vigorous political advocacy on more educational opportunities for women. Catherine died at the age of 78 in 1878. Catherine laid a solid foundation from which grew teacher education programs. She was a pioneer in advocating for the higher education of women, spending much of her time teaching, lecturing, and writing on the topic. Catherine saw that teaching allowed women to have an independent and consequential, yet feminine, role in their society. Catherine was able to help society recognize the value of women's work. She did not do this by challenging the traditional views of women being subordinate to men, but to present women in a profound way as strong and influential force that helped to determine the direction and conscience of a nation, thus opening up the doors to women's education and careers.